I'm Judith Monroe, and this is my studio. And today I'm going to show you how to cut a window mat for a photograph or any piece of art. Kind of a lot like this. The first thing to do is to make sure that we have all of the tools that we're going to need for um, creating our window mat. This is how it's going to be finished. Um, we've got our window mat and our mounting board and the artwork. Um, in this case, um, an alternative process photograph. Um, I'm gonna set that away. So um, this is the image that we're going to be um, matting today. We need two boards for um, that are clean. Make sure it's clean. Um, for the mat board. So this is um, four ply white smooth mat board. These are 11 by 14 inches. And um, we can see that visually this will fit inside of this space pretty well. Um, so the other things that we're going to need, a ruler, um, a pencil, this is um, linen hanging tape, so it's archival, and archival photo corners. I also have a piece of scratch paper, and this here is um, a Logan mat cutter. Um, pretty readily available for not too much, um, not too much money. Totally worth it if you're going to be making a lot of your own photographs or artworks that need to be matted. Um, investing in one of these um, will save you a lot of money in having somebody else cut your mats. This is the standard um, bevel cutter. All right, so the first thing to do after we've gotten all of our things assembled is um, we're going to actually, I always start with a drawing. So here I've drawn out... Um, I'm going to push this to the side just a little bit here. So I've drawn out the basics because I, I have to know where I'm going to be cutting things. So um, I just made a quick sketch of the window and I know that the um, measurement across here is 11 inches. I measured um, this space here. So um, how I'm going to be doing this is I want the mat to come outside of these um, rough edges but I still want to keep this image fairly centered. So I figured that I need um, seven inches this way and 10 inches this way for my window. And so um, what I need to do is I need to take seven inches out of 11 um, and split that in half so that I know how far in this space here is. So um, 11 minus seven happens to be a really nice, neat number, which is four. And um, that four split in half is two inches. I didn't even plan that, and that makes it so easy. So I write on my drawing that this space here needs to be two inches each. Um, oh look, simple math today. Um, and then this way we've got 10 inches and 14. And again, that gives us four inches. But if we split that in half, um, it's going to look kind of awkward. Um, we always want to leave a little bit more space at the bottom so that something looks visually centered. Um, and in something like this, we would want to make it um, maybe a half to a quarter inch more on the bottom. Um, it's an optical illusion. If I made these exactly the same, it would feel like the space at the bottom was too small. So um, half, if I did them both, would be two inches. But if um, I subtract a quarter of an inch from one from the top and add it to the bottom, that'll give me a half inch more down here. Um, so that would be one and three quarter of an inch on the top and um, adding a quarter would make that two and one quarter inches 
on the bottom, okay? So um, I'm going to sketch this out now. I'm actually going to set this aside and keep this handy. Um, and on my board, my front board, I'm going to put my backing board aside as well. And I'm going to bring my mat cutter over here because it's going to help me with my measurements. Um, so the way these mat cutters are designed is... Um, Set that aside for the moment. Um, this kind of lifts up and I can place things under here and I have a nice scale here that's going to show me where my inches are. So if I adjust this and this is says two inches right here. Oh, it says and read the scale from this side. So be smart and um, Make sure that you're reading the scale from this right side. I need this board in here to help me um, protect. So when I'm cutting things, um, I do it right. This is how it's designed, is to cut through the top board and into the bottom board. Um, and I don't really need it to make measurements, but I'm keeping it in here. So now this is two inches, so I can lift this and I can just give myself, make sure I'm writing on the back side. That's important. So I'm drawing on the back side of my front board. I almost messed that up. That would have been so sad. Okay, so two inches on the side here. Two inches on the side here. I want to give two and a quarter on my bottom and then one and three quarters on my top and um, uh, the person who taught me how to do this and did it um, he was one of the people you could hire to do it. He worked at a shop. Um, he taught me the trick of always putting a little X at the top so that when I put it together, um, I won't get confused. Um, so now I'm ready to actually cut. And um, I'm going to, oh, before I do that, I wanna do a little reality check. So I want to kind of look at this and imagine these lines coming down here. So it's good to see that these lines will still come to the inside of my paper here and still have enough space. I wanted to give it plenty of breathing space here. So that looks pretty good. And then the same this direction. And sometimes imagining where lines go can be hard. So I can even use my ruler to kind of go, all right, that's kind of more space on the top than I was imagining. But if I scooch that, and then I lay this one here, then I see I've got that nice, about a quarter inch um, top and bottom. And on this side here, I believe I'm kind of giving myself, let's kind of do that. And this side is gonna have more white space inside the mat, but it's also gonna create, put this in the visual center. Okay, so that looks good. Always, always, I try to do um, that check because if I wait till after I cut, then I've wasted a board and I don't wanna do that, though I have. Okay, so now um, you can see this little cutter has a guideline here and I'm gonna set that line up with this here. I push in, I hold this down, and I'm sliding, I'm really a pressing of, uh, pushing and causing a lot of pressure. I can't talk and cut at the same time, apparently. And I stop where this line hits this. Now, um, and I'm, you can see I'm cutting from the back side and I'm always keeping the window on the right hand side of this rail, that's really important. I've actually had students, um, not do that and they cut a bevel back a backwards bevel um, and it's sad sometimes you can salvage it sometimes not 
Okay, so now I put it on my guide on the two inches, so I'm ready to cut the two sides. And again, push down, a lot of pressure, and I stop at that top line. And this side, It takes a little bit of practice to get um, the control and the pressure, um, but you can do that. So now I'm ready to do my final cut on the bottom. You can see everything's kind of wanting to slide apart here. Up. I've got one little um, corner that wants to stick and um, I need an exacto blade okay so now instead of pulling if I tore this apart because there's just a little tiny bit of the mat board still there I would cause a tear and so instead I just used um, an exacto and now I've got my window I'm not done yet so, but I'm ready to assemble. Look, there, that's how it's gonna fit. So now I'm bringing my backing board over. And the first thing I need to do is actually hinge my boards together. So keeping that top um, is where I'm gonna hinge it. And I, this is where I'm gonna use my tape and um, I don't need a lot of tape so that's about I don't know two pieces that are a little over an inch inch and a half so what I just did you're not gonna really see that is um this is um, gummed so I have to lick this back side it tastes oh just fabulous um my favorite thing in the whole world <laughs> so i'm giving it pressure and i'm kind of using my fingernail to kind of get that um in that crease there um and it dries fairly rapidly and so now i can just fold it and now i've got my little hinge and I'm ready to um, place my image inside the window. So I'm just gonna lift it here and I'll just kind of play with it to make sure it's where it belongs. This is where I'm gonna be able to fine tune a little bit more where that sits. So, and when I've got it where I like it, I'm gonna use a weight. Um, sometimes students have even put their phone on here as a weight. I have a little bag of pebbles. Um, just to wanna make sure it's not something that's gonna hurt the surface of the photograph. And now it's not gonna move. And I get my little photo corners. And these are little clear pockets. I can also make photo corners. There's a lot of different ways, but this is simple and easy. Little pre-made photo corners. You can get a lot of places. Um, and I'm just sliding, they're invisible. I mean, they're clear, so they're probably pretty nearly invisible to you, but that's also kind of the point um, try to make sure that the edges of the corners never show, but every once in a while, um, if one of those came through the corner of a mat, it wouldn't be disastrous. Well, I might feel like it was disastrous, but. Okay, so now that I've got all four corners on, 
I can lift away the weight and I can close it. I have a little piece of dust there. And there we have a lovely matted photograph. This happens to be um, a Van Dyke alternative process print that I made in a workshop a few years ago. And I thought the pair of these, this would just make a really nice pair. So I'll have to go find a couple of frames and uh, space on my walls. That could be the hard part. But there you go. That's how you create a window mat for a photograph or another piece of art. I hope you enjoyed that. And I'd love it if you subscribed or commented or liked or all of the above. See you next time.